Hello, this is Gene Kupfer, Senior Manager Customer Success and Professional Services with Sentinel One. In this training video, I will go over some basic administrative functionality. The first item I would like to show you is adding new Management Console users. You start by logging into a dashboard and then going into Settings and Users. From here, you just click Add New User, fill in the username, their full name, their email address, choose from a role of either administrator or viewer, enter a password for them twice, and click Save. The next item I'd like to show you and talk about is deployment of Sentinel-1 endpoint agents. The initial deployment should take place using your standard deployment practices and whatever standard deployment software you normally utilize for installing agents across your enterprise endpoints. Upgrading, however, is a very straightforward and simple process by selecting the machine under network or multiple machines. You can select one or more in such a matter, or you can select all of them and then click actions. Scroll down to update software and click on it. Select the platform, in this case it's Windows, select from recent updates and this will show you all the installers available under your settings updates page. Select the one you want to push for the update, click update and then to begin the update confirm one more time by clicking OK and all the selected machines will receive the update. The other thing that you will find very useful is under the network view, you can create filters. The filters are right at the top of the page and you just click to expand it. And here you have various options for what kind of information you want to filter by to, to create a filter group. You could also add additional filter criteria from this drop down by clicking this plus sign. Anything that is in blue is already selected. So if you can see pending actions here, if I click on it, it will be deselected. And then I click Save. And it's gone. So if I want to bring that back, click it again, click Save, and I have it back. Now, let's say I want to filter all my Windows machines. And I'll just click Windows. And I can then further filter by last online, type, version, any other field that's available or that I have added from the additional ones available. Once I have created my filter, I can come here and I can save it. I just click Save New Set, give it a name and click Save. The saved filters will always appear under this dropdown. If you're not happy with the selection of your filter or would like to change one of the selections, you just can come up here and let's say you have Windows Desktop, all you do is just click the X and it'll remove the selection that you do not want. And then you can just save the filter again. The other item that will be very useful for you is to create groups. Groups can be used to put machines together into a single group that resembles a particular set of filters or a particular department or anything that you find relevant to keep things organized and clean. For example, you could have a group for nothing but servers or a group for all Windows machines or a group that represents and contains endpoints from the legal department and so on. And the way you do that is by coming to the network page and clicking groups at the top right and selecting new group. From this page, you, na you name the group, you select the policy that will apply to this group, and you can also select dynamic grouping. And if turned on, then you can choose which filter to apply. And the filter that applies to this group will result in machines automatically showing up in this group if they meet the selected filter. Once your settings are all set, just click OK and your group is enabled. Finally, I would like to show you the policies. If you go to the settings page, the default initial view on settings is policies. You can create a new policy 
by clicking new policy here and you can give it a name select what kind of protection this policy will provide for threats between detect alert only or protect kill and quarantine and for suspicious the same thing on the right you can enable and disable our different detection engines by default they're all enabled and unless there's a specific use case that requires disabling one or more engines it is recommended to leave them enabled for maximum protection below you have additional settings for autoimmune decommissioning machines for those that haven't been online exclusions from selecting from exclusion lists agent configuration you can ena enable or disable various agent options for example if i don't want the users to see the agent ui which will remove the tray icon and notifications from the agent and finally deep visibility configuration thank you very much